Imagine standing in front of a crowd with all eyes on you, waiting for you to make them laugh. The pressure, the expectation it's enough to make anyone's palms sweat. That's what stand-up comedy is all about. It's a test of wit, timing, and the ability to connect with an audience on a deeper level. But what if I told you that even the greatest comedians had their fair share of struggles? Take Steve Martin, for example. He dedicated 30 years of his life to perfecting the art of stand-up comedy. 10 year. S of learning. Another 10 years of floundering in tiny clubs, and finally 10 years of growing success. By 1978, he had become the biggest concert draw in stand-up comedy history. But by 1981, he walked away from it all, ready for something new, in his memoir, Born Standing Up. Martin shares the lessons he learned along the way. Lessons that can inspire all of us, regardless of whether stand-up comedy is on our bucket list or not. Lesson number one, embrace naivete. Martin believes that his lack of natural ability actually worked to his advantage. He had that quality called navit, which kept him from realizing just how unsuited he was for stand-up comedy. It was his innocence, his childlike approach, that gave him the courage to chase his dreams. So perhaps we could all benefit from a little more naivete in our pursuit of success. Lesson number two, get your reps. Steve Martin performed in clubs for over two decades before making it big. It wasn't that he wasn't in front of the right people, W. Hen he started, but rather that he wasn't ready for the big time. He needed the consistent work, the repetition, to enhance his act and build his confidence. It's the consistency that separates the good from the great. Lesson number three, be consistently good. Every entertainer has a night when everything clicks, when the audience is roaring with laughter. But what's more important is being consistently good night after night, no matter the circumstances. It's about perfecting your craft and delivery. In your best performance every time, instead of celebrating the nights you kill it, focus on becoming consistently good. Lesson number four, harness the power of delusion. Delusions of grandeur aren't always evil sometimes, they're necessary. Steve Martin believes that between moments of valid inspiration, it's important to charge oneself up with delusions. That's the self-belief, the confidence that can propel you forward. Delusion leads to confidence, confidence leads to skill, and skill leads to CE. R-T-A-I-N-T-Y, lesson number five, embrace change. After reaching the pinnacle of success in stand-up comedy, Steve Martin decided to pursue a career in movies. He realized that inspiration doesn't disappear, it simply moves. He was able to take everything he learned from stand-up and apply it to his new venture. The experience he gained from one opportunity helped him excel in the next. And finally, lesson number six, the power of storytelling. Martin discovered that the laugh is formed when the storyteller CR eats tension and with the punchline releases it. Even the simplest jokes follow the basic arc of storytelling. It's about building anticipation and providing that satisfying release. So, if you want to make people laugh, learn the art of storytelling. In conclusion, stand-up comedy is a challenging and rewarding pursuit. It's not just about telling jokes, it's about connecting with an audience, creating tension, and delivering that punchline. Steve Martin's journey in stand-up comedy teaches us the I, importance of embracing naivete, putting in the work, being consistently good, harnessing the power of delusion, embracing change, and mastering the art of storytelling. So my friend, I leave you with a question, what lessons will you take from Steve Martin's story? How will you apply them to your own life and pursuits? Reflect on this and take action, because success is waiting for those who are willing to step outside their comfort zone and embrace the unexpected. And if you found this video Valua, BLE, I encourage you to show your appreciation by giving a tip proportional to the value received. The link to contribute can be found in the description below. Thank you for watching, and remember, laughter is the key to unlocking a world of joy and connection. Stay curious, stay inspired, and keep chasing your dreams. It's time to break free from the mindset that everything worth doing is hard. This notion that writing, creating, and pursuing meaningful work is an insurmountable mountain to climb is holding you back. It's time to shatter that illusion and embrace the truth. Writing is not hard. Creating is not hard. Making things that matter is not hard. Let's take a moment to reflect on what is truly hard in life. Childbirth, parenting, dealing with loss, and facing injustice are all genuinely challenging. These ye are the mountains we must climb, the battles we must fight. But writing, starting a blog, pursuing our passions, these are not hard tasks. The path to success has already been paved for us. There are manuals, precedents, and formulas available to guide us. We just need to take the first step. It's not hard to write 500 words a day. It's not hard to start a blog and share your thoughts and creations with the world.
it's not hard to seek answers and solutions to your biggest struggles through a SIM, PLE Google search, or by turning to platforms like YouTube and Quora. In fact, it's never been easier to seize the countless opportunities that are available to us. We live in an era of affluence and technological advancements. If you're reading this right now, you are privileged. Don't squander that privilege by claiming that it's hard to make a difference or pursue your dreams. Sure, facing reality can be daunting. There will be failures along the way. But admitting that something is hard is not been fitting you in any way. It's simply another excuse for procrastination and self-doubt. It's time to embrace the truth. It's time to let go of the notion that writing and creating are hard. It's time to dismantle the barriers we've built in our minds. So my friend, I challenge you to rise above this falsehood. Take advantage of the opportunities laid before you. Embrace the abundance of resources at your fingertips. Stop saying it's hard and start taking action. In this era of prosperity and technology, Cal Advancement, it has never been easier to do work that matters, create the life you desire, and make a difference in the world. Even if it's just in your own small way, don't wait for things to become easier. They want. Take that first step, and you'll realize that writing, creating, and pursuing your passions are not hard. It's time to let go of the excuses, silence the self-doubt, and embrace the opportunities that await you. So my friend, I ask you this, what actions will you take today to make a change in your life? How will you utilize the resources that surround you? It's time to rewrite your narrative and embark on a journey of transformation. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell to receive more valuable insights and tips. By doing so, you'll unlock the key to success and achieve the benefits shared in this video. If you found this video valuable and it has positively impacted your life, consider giving a tip in proportion to the value you received. Why? Our support will allow us to continue creating content that helps ambitious individuals like you thrive. Remember, my friend, writing, creating, and pursuing meaningful work are not hard. It's time to reclaim your power and take charge of your own destiny. The world is waiting for your unique voice and contributions. Energy and attention are finite resources that easily run out, and in today's fast-paced world, most people barely have enough to make it through their busy days. To experience true and lasting success in any area of life, such as family, relationships, career, finances, health, and personal projects, it's crucial to learn how to efficiently fill up your energy tank and channel your energy properly. In this video, we will discuss three undeniable energy wasters that you need to quit in order to star. T channeling your energy and attention productively and purposefully. The first energy waster is multitasking. Many people like to think they are skilled at multitasking, but the truth is, it doesn't work. In his book Deep Work, Cal Newford discusses the concept of attention drag, which means that every time we switch tasks, a little bit of our attention is left behind, resulting in less and less attention for each task, instead of multitasking. It's more effective to spend uninterrupted and intense, leave focus periods of time on one or two projects. This deep work structure allows for reduced attention drag and better energy channeling. The second energy waster is the inability to say no. There is no shortage of good opportunities that come your way. But taking on too many projects that don't truly matter can drain your energy reserves. It's essential to prioritize and only say yes to great opportunities that align with your goals and contribute to your ultimate life vision. Sometimes, it's nice. Sorry to say no to good opportunities in order to save your energy for the truly meaningful ones. The third energy waster is surrounding yourself with the wrong people. While the people offering good opportunities may not necessarily be bad people, it's important to consider whether their projects and demands on your time align with your own goals and priorities. Maintaining relationships with individuals who monopolize your time for their own projects can be detrimental when you're busy working on your own legacy. It's crucial to narrow your focus and avoid diluting your energy and attention by taking on too many side projects and involving yourself with individuals who don't contribute to your growth and success. In summary, your energy and attention reserves are precious, and in order to maximize them, it's crucial to eliminate energy-wasting habits such as multitasking, saying yes to every opportunity, and surrounding yourself with the wrong people. Engaging in deep work, focusing your energy on select projects, and saying no to merely good opportunities will allow you to channel your energy and attention more effectively. As Warren Buffett said, the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. So, are you ready to stop wasting your energy and start channeling it towards your most important projects? 
Think about the energy wasters in your life and consider how you can eliminate them. Share in the comments below what actions you will take to quit these energy wasting habits and channel your energy more productively. If you found this video valuable and would like to support us, consider giving a tip proportional to the value you received. The link can be found in the description. Thank you for watching, and remember, your energy and attention are too precious to waste. Since I've started writing longer pieces of text such as articles and essays, I've always come up against a roadblock, concentration. I would always lose my focus on the subject by taking a break, which would consist of going on my phone or watching a YouTube video for a bit. This break would go from the planned 5 minutes to 10, then to 30, and so on going down the rabbit hole of scrolling through social media or clicking on a chain of recommended videos on YouTube, I've read many articles and stud. I ease on why we procrastinate and how we can stop it, but I think that we all know how to, but are just too lazy to do it. What pushed me to actually implement the ways that many recommend stopping procrastination was my overwhelming inner guilt of wasting time where I could be productive, which has only recently hit me. Now, I will try to help others as I have helped myself by outlining some very easy ways to come out of this state of mediocrity and to achieve more than the status quo, I've found th. At my phone is my biggest time sink. Since getting an S10, I've been able to access a digital well-being tab in its settings, which shows how much time I spend on my phone and a breakdown by app on which app I spend the most time on. I was shocked to find that some days, at its peak, I spent upwards of 12 hours on a combination of apps, this is what initially triggered my guilt and pushed me to find ways to be more productive to combat this. I've come up with a simple solution. Throw your phone away. Why, not literally. By this, I mean place your phone somewhere around 12 meters away from your workspace. This should be close enough so that you are not tempted to go on it to browse for a few minutes, but also close enough so that in case you need to use it for something productive, you can reach it relatively easily. By making it harder to reach your phone, you're going to start to break the habit of immediately going for your phone when you are bored or during downtime, which will also have lawn. GTERM benefits towards your attention span and mental well-being. YouTube, Netflix, or any other video streaming platforms are my second biggest time sinks. Ending up on YouTube and going into the rabbit hole of videos has wasted an uncountable amount of time for me. Just by looking at the new Time Watch section that you can find if you click your profile on the mobile YouTube app, I can see that in the past week, I have watched 27 hours and 9 minutes of YouTube. On average, it takes me around 2-3 hours to write a good quality text, which means that in this time, I could have finished 912 medium-sized texts or 3 heavily researched texts. And this is with the time I've spent in only one week, I've found that the previous point of removing my phone from my workspace helped greatly with this as my phone was one of the main gateways I had to YouTube. To combat my YouTube use on my computer, I open a completely different browser window when I start a project, which I force myself to use for the sole purpose of researching and writing the project. This would also work for other platforms such as Netflix. By separating my leisure and work browser tabs, I've become more focused on the task at hand, as when I finish it, I can close the work tab and access my leisure tab. Lastly, time management. I've always been a believer in flexibility when working. If I had a rigid time slot to get work done, I would always bend the restraints to my liking. This turned out to be very bad for my work ethic, as the time that I would allocate myself to work in would be wasted. I've had to break this habit by adapting, and now I try to allocate work slots of around one hour throughout the day. Having a one hour work slot means that I don't get discouraged and lose morale before I start working, as one hour isn't too much time to spend working. This allows me to take a break if I feel burned out after, or to continue if I feel inspired or finish my train of thought. Using these three tips won't directly make you into T. He most productive writer, editor, or whatever you aspire to be. You still need to direct this new supply of time into something productive, as well as being determined enough to push past the initial boredom and reflex to take breaks and procrastinate. If you push past the initial barrier, you will greatly appreciate your newfound productivity and will be an overall better person for it. Remember, taking small steps towards better time management can lead to significant changes in your productive. ITY and achievements thank you for watching, and if you found this video valuable, please consider giving a tip proportional to the value received. The link can be found in the description. Now, I want to hear from you. What are the actions from this video that you are going to implement in your life? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, subscribe to our channel, like this video, 
and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, keep striving for S, U-C-C-E-S-S, -S, and be the best version of yourself.